Okay, so we've been talking about um, forces in this class, and we've been talking about a lot of forces that are constant. Today's the day we're going to talk about a force that is not constant and uniform everywhere. It's a force that changes with location, and it's our chance to practice what we have learned about work and energy. So we're going to talk about springs. And how springs work is you imagine a stiff coil like the shocks in a car, if you've ever seen that, and I guess old-fashioned shocks in a car, such that if you stretch them, if you take a mass on the end of a spring and you pull the mass outward so you stretch the spring, it will spring back once you let go. Similarly, if you try and compress that spring, it will also spring back. And so um, it will always head back to equilibrium. And so let's choose an equilibrium point. Let's call that x equals zero. That's very standard for talking about springs. And we'll have some x-axis. And what we do is we write that the force by the spring, now this is called Hooke's Law. It's not a law um, in the sense that it's true for everything. But it's, it's an observational um, thing that we've noticed for a lot of springs, and it's the easiest kind of spring. And so it's the kind of spring where the force is proportional to the displacement. So x is the displacement away from x equals 0, so displacement from equilibrium. And we're going to use as the constant of proportionality k, so it's a newtons per meter of displacement. And the force is a restoring force. So if you try and move the mass one way, the spring's going to try and bring it back the other way. And how we represent that is with a minus sign. So it's a restoring force. The force is always restoring force. The force is always in the opposite direction of displacement. Okay, so let's practice. The work that's done by the spring is F dot DS, and they're both along the x-axis, so that's a minus KX DX for a restoring force. And let's go, say, from some position, um, let's call the position here the in, that's dashed, x initial, and then it heads back to some x final. So it goes from x initial to x final, and that's negative out front, 1 half k x squared is how we integrate that, from x initial to x final, and that's 1 half minus 1 half k x final squared plus one half k x initial squared. And we can write that, let's flip it around just for a minute, one half k x initial squared minus one half k x final squared. If you look at the way I drew that up there, that's greater than zero. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does, because if we move an object out to the initial position such that the spring is stretched, and we let go, what is the spring going to do? By the time it gets back to the x final position, maybe equilibrium or some other place closer to equilibrium, it will have some kinetic energy. So yes, we actually agree that this is true, because we know that the change in the kinetic energy is equal to zero in this experiment. But when it comes to potential energy now, we can talk about potential energy. We can come back up here and we can notice that we have written that the work done is negative the change in some function, and we can call that function U, the potential energy in a spring system, is then one-half kx squared anywhere. And so the work that the spring does is negative the change in this potential energy. So we have a force. We have a force that gets bigger with F. 
and a potential energy that is the area under this curve. A potential energy that's the area under the curve. <laughs> 